Today, I'm talking to early stage founders and how you need to close deals with customers before trying to close investment. So every startup's problem is that they don't have enough money and they're running out of runway. You know, obviously, cash flow is 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 a huge deal when you're running a startup. It's a big deal in any business. But, you know, you need to get your first customers in the door and you need to start growing that to be able to extend your runway. Um, we were in that same position before at Proposify back in the early days. Um, you know, we were we kind of benefited because as ch- with two co-founders, myself and Kevin, Kevin could kind of work on getting the investment stuff in place and, and dealing with uh, cash and finances while I worked on the product market fit side and, you know, driving traffic to the website and getting people to sign up for the product. Now, a lot of startups have uh, co-founders that have a different skill set. So you might have uh, one that's maybe a technical co-founder, and then the other one is doing all the business stuff. So they're responsible for the finances and getting deals closed. And that can sometimes present problems where there may be that business co-founder is too tied up in trying to get investment at the expense of trying to get the first customers in the door. So what if you're running out of money and you need to get cash in the door somehow, and you maybe have some interested investors who've, who have um, you know given you some indication that they're interested in doing a deal, and you also maybe have a couple of uh, deals on the table with customers that you you could potentially close if you put the work into it. Now, what I've actually experienced with talking to other startup co-founders is sometimes they'll put aside uh, talking to customers and put more emphasis on trying to close the deal with an investor. Um, I think that's a mistake. And the reasons why is because even if you got an investor to say yes and say that they wanted to do a deal, maybe give you a term sheet, Um, What a lot don't realize is how long it still takes to get money in the bank. So if you're only a month uh, of running out of of capital for your runway, you know, raising money is probably two months alone of just due diligence and and dealing with lawyers and all the back and forth. So it's not a fast thing to close a deal with an investor. I say you're better off focusing on closing those handful of deals with customers, which especially if you're uh, selling a higher priced product, might provide you with the cash flow you need to extend your runway. So what size of customer are you going after? I mean, if you're selling a, a lower price SaaS product that's say $20 or $50 a month, um, you know, sales is, is probably not as needed as marketing. You need to be a good marketer as a, as a founder and drive a lot of traffic to your site, convert it into signups and get people to sign up to paid plans. Um, but if you're selling a, uh, an enterprise type of software where you're maybe getting into um, six figures or five figure deals, um, you need to put more of an effort on sales because just driving traffic alone isn't going to help you. So you need to get good at sales yourself if you're a founder. You know, sometimes founders think that the order of operation is you raise money first, then you hire a sales team, and then that's how you uh, get to product market fit and to begin to scale. It's really not the case. You have to be the best salesperson at the beginning. You have to kind of carve out that path that. You know, down the road, if you raise money, you can hire a sales team or hire a VP of sales who can do it better than you. But in the early days, you as the founder have to be the lead salesperson. And so if you're not good at sales, you need to kind of learn how to get good or at least good enough to be able to keep the company uh, afloat. So what are some things that you can do to get better at sales? So first, you need to get good at sales yourself. And, you know, one of the ways to do that is to basically look at all different stages of your sales pipeline. Again, if I'm going to go under the assumption, at least for this episode, that we're talking about selling an enterprise product. So you're selling larger size deals to customers and you're still very early on. What you need to do first is you need to be able to find leads, get a lead list from somewhere. Now, you might be tempted to just kind of buy a a list and email it or or send out a big email blast, uh, which probably isn't the most effective way to do it. Um, As hard as it is for a lot of founders, especially if you're not keen on sales or it's not one of your skill sets, you have to get over that fear and start cold calling. Cold calling is one of the best ways you can get new customers in the door. It's uh, uncomfortable. It might, it's not something you're probably accustomed to doing, but it's way more uh, effective than just emailing alone. So what actually my uh, co-founder Kevin likes to do, and he's told me this over the years, is he likes to leave a voicemail telling them that he's going to send an email to them and then send an email and reference his voicemail. And that's one of the better ways to get a response rate to your emails is to call ahead. Yes, you're probably going to hit their voicemail anyway, 
um, but it, it lets them hear your voice and realize that you're a real person. You know, I once heard Michael Litt, the CEO of Vidyard, talking about how in the early days of building Vidyard, um, how he pulled together his lead list. And it was really interesting because, you know, essentially what he did was he built a scraper and scraped the web and found every website where somebody had video on their homepage. Um, he sells a video SaaS product. So it made sense that if somebody is already using video on their website, they would make a good potential lead. And that's what he used as his call list and his email list. So you can kind of get creative about how you find leads and find good quality ones that you can serve. Use Sales Navigator, use tools like Yesware that can get their email address. There's all kinds of tools that you can use, but the key is just don't overthink it. Um, you can spend an endless amount of time strategizing and trying to come up with the perfect system, but at the, end, at the end of the day, you just need to pick up the phone and make some calls. Step number two of getting good at, at sales is being able to completely own the demo. So once you do get a prospect on a call, maybe you're going through Zoom and you're doing a screen share and showing them your product, is don't show them every single feature of your product. Spend some time getting to know them, understanding their pain points, and then reframing how you actually demo the product based around what they've already told you. So that's one of the ways that good salespeople effectively uh, sell through demos. Another thing to think about is multi-threaded deals. So if you're selling to larger companies, you'll typically not just have one contact, you'll have several. So you might be selling to a CMO and they want your product, but in order to get it passed through, it has to go through IT and then legal. So um, another mistake I see some co-founders make, or some founders make rather, is that they try to sell the same way to an IT director as they sell to the, the maybe their original contact, which is the CMO. So you have to remember that they all have different motivations for wanting your product. In fact, an IT person probably doesn't even care if they use your product. They just need to make sure that it's got the security and the stability and it integrates well and it's seamless to uh, get up and using. And they want to protect their own job and their own reputation. So they don't want to say yes to something that um, they're concerned about. So you're obviously going to sell completely different to that person than you are uh, maybe your core audience, your core customer. So multi-threaded deals, get to know how that works and be sure that you're understanding each stage of the buying process and who you're dealing with. One really effective strategy for closing deals is to actually ask your prospect to walk you through the buying cycle. So if you're on that initial call or demo and they're interested and you've gotten them to that aha moment, I need this, um, ask them, okay, great, what else uh, What else is it going to take for us to do business together? Is this something you can sign off on today? What do you need? And they'll often say, well, no, that has to go get passed through legal and they'll have to come back with some changes. Okay, great. So we get all the changes done to the contract. What else happens then? Do we, do, is, is it a done deal? And oh, no, well, then it has to get passed through IT. So actually get the, the customer themselves to tell you what all the roadblocks are going to be and what all the challenges are going to be so you can understand what that buying journey looks like more. When you're actually at the stage where you can close it, one thing that I highly advise is using time constraints effectively. I say this all the time because what happens often is you get on a demo, the, the client is hot to buy, and what do you do? You say, okay, great, look it over and I'll get you some pricing next week, and then uh, let's see what we can do, uh, or let me know if you have questions. It's, it's you know, you it, kind of old school sales advice, but you have to really ask for the sale, and one of the best ways to do that without coming across as desperate is to give them a time constraint to say, okay, I need you, if this looks good and you're, you're excited to buy, um, I'm going to send you through a document, and I need you to look it over, get, me, get back to me with any questions, and I need you to sign it by next Wednesday, um, if we're going to do the deal or maybe even stack in an additional offer, say, I'm going to give you free onboarding services. We usually charge 5k for that. I'll throw it in for free, but I need a yes or no by next Wednesday. So using time constraints effectively, it's a classic sales technique that salespeople use. And if you're a founder who doesn't know sales that well, get used to using this technique and try it out on your next demo and see how that goes. Now, I know it's really hard when you're maybe a few weeks or months of running out of runway, but it's really difficult to not signal desperation to a client. Um, it happens a lot. Um, try as much as possible to be confident in what you're selling. Um, and one of the, the things that I see in what some, some founders are doing is they're heavily discounting to try to get a deal. And it, it often doesn't work. Um, and the reason it doesn't work is because if you're telling your client, hey, if you say yes to this, I'll give you a 60% discount. 
what you're kind of signaling to them is maybe you were overcharging before and it's not actually worth that, or maybe you're really desperate to do this deal, so you're going to essentially give it away for free, um, and it just doesn't come across well. Uh, leads and prospects will actually back away when they sense that the salesperson is desperate to close. So try to, um, as much as possible, have a power frame, repitch anything by Oren Claff, and really uh, be confident and signal that you're in charge and you're taking control of the sales cycle. Just a quick note to technical co-founders. I think uh, some of those people have the hardest time in getting out of the building and talking to people because they're uh, really used to sitting behind a computer and engineering and building technology. And so the idea of getting out and talking to people, they always try to outsource it or they try to get an intern to do it. Um, they try to avoid it themselves. But really, you know, whether you're selling a high price product or um, a smaller market uh, product, you really need to get out of the building and talk to people. Um, what happens a lot is technical co-founders will try to build a cool piece of technology and then find a market that wants it as opposed to starting at the problem, figuring out what the a market needs and then building technology to solve that. There's a great uh, quote by Steve Jobs where he said, you know, you've got to start with the customer's needs and work backwards. You can't start with the product and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room and I've got the scar tissues to prove it. So really, in uh, you know, making customer development a part of your everyday process is so important. You need to get into the rhythm of every single week talking to customers, booking calls with customers or leads, and figuring out what they need. This is really how you get to your first 10 customers. Let's talk leverage. So the thing is, if you're actively trying to raise money, but you don't have customers in the door yet, or maybe you've got one, it's going to be even harder to try to close investment. And, and I'm not saying don't ever try to raise money. It's just that you don't have any leverage if you don't have customers. The thing is, most investors are looking to put rocket fuel into a, into a company that's growing and they're trying to help it scale. They're not trying to resurrect a dead company or keep a company from running out of money. So the best leverage in the world you can have is you're already growing sales yourself. You don't actually need the money to stay alive. You're just presenting an opportunity to the investors that they can help, um, you know, increase the sales and scale it faster. Sales really is the foundation of how you build a company. Um, and especially early on, it's your job as the founder to own that and to do the difficult job of carving out the path that later on you can then hire a sales team and maybe a VP of sales to do it even more effectively. But you need to do the hard work from the beginning and for now, you've got to close. So I hope you like this. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. This episode of Lifetime Value is brought to you by Proposify. Proposify improves sales productivity so your team spends less time creating proposals and more time selling. Start your free trial at Proposify.com. And be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode.